There's two hazardous points in operating these vehicles, and that's getting it over the side and getting it back, because you just don't know what's going to happen when you pick that vehicle up. And once we've got over the, the side safely, then we have a number of key things that we've got to do. We've got to get the vehicle away from Falco. At the same time, we'll then connect two catenary floats. It means that we can manage the actual umbilical and how much umbilical is going to and from Sebastian to and from the ship. What we tried to avoid was this catenary coming down and trailing on the seabed. And we want to make sure that Sebastian is being protected from those movements of currents, tide, and, and fog as best as we can. At the moment, we're passing uh, 1,300 meters seawater with Sebastian. And there's a lot of data presented here, and we're monitoring the winch to make sure there's no issues with it. The speed of the winch, the speed of the ROV descent through the water column, compensator levels, the motor temperature, the oil temperature. We periodically look at those to ensure all those numbers look good. The navigational system is one of the most important systems we have on the vehicle. So when the vehicle starts to dive, they'll use the depth sensor and the USBL position to keep track of the vehicle in the water column. The USBL is what gives us our positioning relative to Falcor, so it's like our underwater GPS. Then as we get side of the bottom, we can start using information from the Doppler velocity log, which keeps track of our movement across the seafloor. That's what gives us our most accurate position when we're working at the bottom. The navigation stations is kind of the heart of the system for the interface between the scientists and the ROV operators as far as planning and gathering the data, the waypoints that they take. It's great for us to go down and pick up a rock or an animal, but they need to know exactly where that sample came from, at what depth and what time and what location. Then when we're on the seabed, and we'll settle on the seabed and we'll pretty much let Sebastian get used to its environment, then go through the set objectives for that dive for that day. We'll use our science tooling, that's manipulators, suction samplers, coral samplers, and make sure we can put rocks and creatures inside of our bio boxes. And the last couple of weeks, we've been doing some pretty gnarly stuff. We've been sending some 1,500 meter uh, vertical cliff faces that are part of our caldera. And we do that in a couple of different ways. We ascended the cliff face, facing into the currents, so Falco was behind us, so if the vehicle failed, we'd effectively like an elastic band get pulled off that cliff face. But again, that's what we're here for, to show that we can use the actual vehicle in condition that scientists want to use it. Well, when you bring a new vehicle into the world, it needs a team to go with it. The vehicle doesn't work by itself. There's a whole team of people that kind of make it operational. It takes a village to raise a child. You know, well, it takes a whole ship's crew to dive Sebastian.